Hi there and welcome to the recording of our first webinar um, relating to the biggest ever survey uh, into student opinions and attitudes towards sustainability in education that this year Students Organising for Sustainability International are running. What we're going to cover today um, is an introduction to why this survey is important, what our end goal is um, by undertaking this work, some information about how the survey can be used by different universities, colleges, and student groups and sector bodies um, across the world, a little bit of logistics, so what the field work period looks like, what to expect, and how to maximise the opportunity of engaging with this work. Um, an outline of what support is going to be provided by SOS International, and then of course some information about how to get involved too. We're going to be sending a recording um, of this uh, webinar as well as the slides around to those who have signed up to um, take part in the survey, but also we'll post those on the SOS website, so that's www.sos.earth, so if you want a reference point, um, both of those will be there for you. And similarly, our contact details will be at the end. So if you have any questions, you want to get in touch, you want to take part in the survey, you want to partner with us on, on making it a success, then we really um, welcome uh, all of those approaches and we look forward to working with you. So what are we aiming to do? We're aiming to get the biggest ever sample size um, in an academically robust survey of student opinions and attitudes towards sustainability. And we want to do this so we can create some, some valuable information, um, some engaging information that we can use, but also um, universities, colleges, students, student groups around the world can use to really lever action to help transform education and direct society to a more sustainable and fair future. So what that looks like is we want to get um, at least 50,000 individual student responses um, from across the globe, um, really recognising that a lot of data um, that has been collated historically has been imbalanced in terms of where um, student opinions uh, have come from. Um, historically, um, there's been a lot of work in, in Europe and in North America, but we want to make sure this is a truly global um, survey uh, and sample of student opinions across the globe. And for that, we're going to need at least 300 university and colleges promoting the survey to their students. And there's a role for, for um, student organisations, for uh, membership organisations, sector organisations to help us reach these targets too. But fundamentally, we want to get this piece of work um, at this scale because we don't feel that there's enough um, research to recognise um, how, to what extent students care about sustainability and sustainability in their education. In the last two years, globally, there's been a huge rise of um, interest and kind of youth mobilisation around these subjects. And we want to be able to underpin the anecdotes and the stories and the protests and the campaigns and the projects that student groups have been developing um, and gaining momentum with, with that academically robust information so that institutions, student groups, new projects, new campaigns, new startups can use that data to really leave a change, whether that's through business cases, whether that's through securing funding, whether that's um, getting applications in to secure resources, whether that's informing policy changes, all underpinned with that robust data set. And what we found with, with other pieces of research that we're taking inspiration from is that also individual organisations get real benefit from this kind of data because they can benchmark their own activity and their own students against that international data to see, um, to, to provide a really useful measure of their performance too. So it's important not just globally, it's important not just um, for institutions, but fundamentally it's important because we're trying to lever that change towards a more sustainable and just future. So it's important not just for, um, for the organisations we hope to partner with, but it's important for um, society as a whole. In terms of institutions and student groups and organisations who work across the education sector who um, we hope to partner with, these are the kind of benefits that we think are, uh, are 
available to you through uh, through the survey of this piece of research. So it helps you understand your own students and your own audience, helps them understand, helps you understand their priorities when it comes to sustainability, their opinions when it comes to sustainability in terms of what you're doing well, where the gaps are, what needs to change. So it's really helpful um, for, for understanding your own students, and your own target audience. As I say, it enables benchmarking, can be used to gain support and resources for the sustainability agenda, adds legitimacy to business plans and funding requests. And we're hoping to make it really easy. So we've developed promotional packs, um, top tips. We're going to provide regular updates on responses throughout the fieldwork period so that really you can maximise the, uh, the benefits for your organisation without putting too much legwork in. <laughs> um, so we're using um, tried and tested methods um, from SOS international members, from um, academics that have worked with us on developing the survey, um, as well as uh, commercial survey organisations um, feeding into those top tips so that what we've got for you is a really robust methodology that you can use, you can pick up, um, apply to the communication streams that you have for your students um, so that we can really maximise that response uh, rate. And the other thing that's in it for you, of course, is the data that will come out of the survey. And the data set sets are quite varied. So for all organisations, and we'll, we'll publish the summary data for all respondents across the world, we'll provide summary data for all respondents in the country in which you are based to help enable that benchmarking, but also locally leveraging change. And then for organisations with more than 100 respondents, we'll also provide you with the raw anonymised data for the respondents in your country or at your organisation, whichever applies to you. So you'll be able to see um, kind of how your particular audience fits in with that global perspective, as well as having that, that summary data, um, the research report for respondents across the world to help depend, inform your work, whether that's at a local level or a global level. So um, as a small incentive for organisations to get on board and to help uh, enhance the response rate, that raw and anonymised data is available for organisations who get more than 100 respondents. So if, that, um, if you're a, a university or a college, that should be eminently doable. And like I say, we've got lots of um, support available to you to, you to help you maximise your own uh, response rates. In terms of what the survey covers, its content, what we're asking about, what kind of information we're pulling, um, we're looking at these themes. So understanding of st sustainable development amongst the student body, awareness of the sustainable development goals, opinions on climate change, opinions on the role of education institutions when it comes to sustainable development and achievement of those SDGs. We're asking about sustainable development in students' courses and in their education to date, what has been influential or not. Um, in in developing their understanding of sustainable development, the impact of their course um, on that student's ability to affect change, so whether or not courses are really equipping students with the skills needed to, to create a sustainable and just future, and also opinions of working for organisations with um, differing sustainable development performances, so um, whether or not students uh, are willing to uh, accept uh, different, differing working um, benefits uh, depending on who they, who they intend to work for in the future. And again, this has been really useful for um, organisations to develop partnerships with organisations outside of the education sector. So if there is data to say students are more likely to want to work for organisations with um, proven good sustainable development performance and practice, that's a good way to reach out to organisations um, to, to partner on creating that sustainable development performance, um, if that is an opportunity that is interested to you. And alongside the slides that we'll send and the recording of today's session, we'll also distribute the survey questions so you can look at those um, and indeed provide feedback on them. If there's things that you think we need to adjust and amend before the field work period goes live, then we're absolutely open to that. We want to make sure that the survey is accessible to as many students as possible globally. Currently, the survey is um, translated into nine different languages um, listed here. So Danish, Dutch, English, French, 
German, Greek, Japanese, Portuguese and Spanish. And what we'd really like is um, to be able to translate the survey into other languages too. So if that's something that would be of benefit to students that you work with and is something that you're able to support with, then we would very much welcome that. And we, we're really grateful to the, to the student groups primarily who have um, translated the survey for us so far and who've reached out to us um, this year to help um, develop uh, further languages uh, into translation. It's a really simple process. Um, it's simply translating um, about five pages, <laughs> um, but um, that's with the questions and there's some repetition in terms of the answers. So we've tried to make it as least onerous uh, a proposition as possible. And we're very grateful for any input or support you can provide us with that. In terms of the timescales, at the moment, um, throughout February and March 2020, we'll be reaching out to universities, colleges, uh, sector bodies, student groups, um, partners for the survey to really prepare as many people as possible um, for when the fieldwork goes live on the 1st of April. The fieldwork could be live throughout the whole of April, so between now, um, February 2020, and the 1st of April, we'll be distributing those promotional packs, developing further communication templates as needed, uh, working with uh, sector bodies to, to promote this uh, opportunity to as many universities as possible, working with student groups to get as many institutions that they work with um, signed up as possible. And what's really important is that we get um, organisations to promote the survey who are not already explicitly dedicated to the sustainability agenda. So um, if your university has a sustainability department, that's fine, but we want to work with uh, the university more broadly so that we're reaching all students, not just those who have committed to a sustainability course, for example. Similarly, if you're a student group and you work across the country looking at education, we'd love to be able to work with you to distribute the survey to students in your network. If you're a sustainability student group, then we don't want to um, promote the survey directly and purely to your networks because that would skew our results if we're only reaching students that have already um, signaled some sort of interest in the sustainability agenda. And that's not to say we don't want to work with sustainability groups, we absolutely do and there's ways that we can work together to, to enhance the response rate in your country or in your region or, or across your networks but just, um, just to flag that it really is universities, colleges, broader education sector bodies um, and student groups that we're looking to distribute the survey. And if you don't fall within that, that great category, then that's not a problem. We can work with you in different ways to make sure that, that you're partnering and working with institutions that don't have that, um, that sustainability bias that would potentially skew our results. Whilst the field work is live, we'll be regularly reviewing the response rates. We'll be providing updates for partners so you can see how many students from your network, um, from your organisation have um, participated, who have responded. Um, and we'll continue to share good practice in how to really enhance those response rates. We are providing an incentive for students to take part. So we have 10 prizes of 100 euros um, or the equivalent um, amount of money in your local currency for students. So it's quite a nice prize pot um, and we'll be referencing that in a lot of the communications um, facing students uh, encouraging them to take part as well so we'll be doing lots of support throughout that field work um, period and then once that closes we'll need some time to um, analyze the results report right um, collate the data sets for um, different participants, different um, partners in the programme, and then develop um, our next stage comms and press packs for the report's publication, which we're looking to do in June 2020. So we'll publish the report that will be hosted on a website. We'll get comms and press packs uh, distributed to partners um, and work with um, SOS International partners as well to really showcase uh, that report as far and wide as we can. Um, we'll be running similar kind of webinars to this to, to introduce the findings. We'll probably produce a short video outlining those. We'll produce some infographics for partners to use as well, um, as well as sending those bespoke data sets um, that are kind of the incentive to our organisational partners um, who've met the response rate threshold. So you can then start to use that data um, locally as well. 
So what we're asking of you today is to sign up to support the survey. Um, this is a simple um, form that you can complete to say, yep, yeah, I'm into to supporting this, whether that's by distributing the survey to students directly or working with institutions or partners of my organisation to get as many students um, signed up as possible to taking part. Once you've signed up, we'll send you um, some guidelines and some promotional packs some top tips. And like I say, it's really important that the survey isn't framed as a sustainability survey, that it's not framed as a green survey and that it's not sent by sustainability focused organisations. But um, we're really happy to work with with all um, people who want to see the survey succeed uh, in appropriate ways. So if you are a sustainability focused organisation, don't let that put you off. We've got lots of ways that you can help um, promote this piece of work to institutions in your network. Similarly, um, we're asking people to, to spread the word to other universities, colleges or student organisations you work with to get involved. And as I've said earlier on, um, we're asking for help translating the survey into other languages, preferably before the fieldwork period opens on the 1st of April so that we can make it as accessible as possible to as many students as possible too. And make sure that the, the responses that we get really are representative of the global student movement. In terms of support available, like I say, there's promotional packs available for um, those distributing the survey to students. We've got promotional packs that um, sector bodies and groups can use to get more universities and partner organisations on board. We're providing the prize incentives for students. We'll provide regular updates on progress and we'll provide advice and guidance on best practice for maximising your response rate. If what you need falls outside of that offer, then please do get in touch with us and we'll look at what we can do to really help um, maximise the support that you can offer to this project. Um, we've already developed a couple of partnership agreements um, with organisations who, who wanted that to be able to really fulfil um, the, the potential of their involvement, for example. So do reach out to us if there's anything else that you need beyond that support that you think would be useful. To get involved, the form that you need to fill in is available at this URL or with this QR code. And again, we'll distribute both of those um, alongside the recording and the slides uh, probably tomorrow. Uh, we'd love to get you on board. And uh, this is the kickstarting process to receive those promotional packs uh, and to really be considered as a partner in the project. If you want to, um, there's no obligation, but if you want to, we're very happy to, to publicise you as a partner in our work. And there's a dedicated section of the SOS website to the survey. Um, the URL for that is here, sos.earth forward slash survey, and we'll be able to showcase your, um, your organisation's logo and the work that you do through that route, if that's something you're interested in. So thank you for listening. Um, to, to the work that we're, we're, we're doing. Thank you for your consideration and hopefully your participation in that work. And we look forward to sharing um, both our plans, but also the results of the survey with you uh, in future. Do get in touch, do, um, do sign up. And if you've got any questions, uh, we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much.